folks, Jason, painfully honest tech. Hey, today I'm gonna take you on a tour of my my studio. My studio, which is like two studios in one. There's this set, which is where I do all my video and live streaming stuff. And then there's my music setup, which is over on the other side of the room. Uh, they're all connected to the same computer. I do different things in different places. Uh, this backstory here is I've been in this space for about four years. If you're not familiar, it, it, I moved into this uh, new house. It had a separate one-car garage that I have converted into my studio. And by converted, I mean tried to make the parts that the camera sees not look like a garage. But the last few months, I decided to take it a few steps further and, and make it into a nicer working space. And so I spent quite some time doing that, quite a few permutations of that. And I wanted to record this video today because um, we're moving. <laughs> we're moving out of this house and into another house. And so I get to do it all again. So I'm going to take you through uh, this setup explain to you all the different stuff. There's a lot of stuff in here, so it may break up into a couple of different videos on a couple of different subjects like the music and the video or something like that, or it might not. I don't know. You'll know when this video comes out whether or not it's either of those things. And so let's just go ahead and get moving. Uh, this is what I see when I come in. So this is my music studio setup. I'm not using Mac anymore, I'm using PC. And so I have this 48 inch LG C1 television set up to, uh, to mirror what's going on back there. This is my Presonus Studio Live 32SX. It's a 24 fader, 32 channel mixing board that I use to do my audio stuff. Uh, I just got it recently. Review is on the way. I'm, you know, slowly getting it set up and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's it's an involved process. It also works as a controller for my DAWs. Uh, and right now I, I'm using Studio Live because I can't use Logic anymore because I'm not on Mac. Uh, my monitors right now are the Focal Solo 6 BEs. Uh, these are expensive. <laughs> expensive. There's my Sony ZV-1 that I use to record stuff if I'm recording stuff over here. At the music side, I haven't recorded anything on the music side for a while yet, really, because I'm still getting things set up. This is a Logitech 915 TKL wireless keyboard. It's got uh, low profile keys, low profile keys, which are nice. This is my uh, Arturia Micro Freak at Freaky. It's freaky. This is my main vocal mic. This is the Mojave Audio MA300. It is a tube mic and it's very nice. It's very nice. More music coming on my music channel soon. I promise. I keep saying that, but it's going to happen. Uh, so I've got everything set up down here. Then down here I have a Antelope Edge microphone. This is a modeling microphone. I'm just kind of using this to do various and sundry things. I've got a Native Instruments M32 keyboard. This is a Personas Atom drum pad. So I just, you know, this is where my ideas begin. This is a Tascam 464 six track, well, four track recorder it's a little bit more involved than just four tracks which is kind of cool and uh, I'm using that for a bunch of different things uh, I'm running things through it I'm recording things into it it is my youth in a box and then here is my turntable hooked up to the personas board right now I've got moon we're now called the phantom six band from my hometown who are excellent Excellent, excellent. Uh, that is a Philips eight, uh, 677 direct drive turntable uh, from back in the 80s, I believe. Bought it at a record shop, reconditioned. Pedal board, <laughs> incense, of course, Wolverine, train set. Uh, yeah, this is just kind of a catch-all of stuff as I continue to clean up. And then down here is my Line 6 Helix LT. I finally sold all of my amplifiers and went to the dark side. 
but I did get this Line 6 Power Cab 112. Uh, it's a 112 plus. So it's a 12 inch speaker and it models all kinds of different classic speakers like cream backs and green backs and all kinds of different stuff. Up here, guitars, I'll go through quickly. Gibson J, J45, Martin D28, uh, Gibson SG with P90s in it. This is a Variax by Line 6. It actually plugs into the Helix via Ethernet. And through Ethernet, I can control the guitar has all kind it, it models different guitars it's it's pretty cool actually uh cheap bronco bass from squire this is a sort of a secret weapon for all of you guitar players or whoever out there who want to put bass on your tracks get a short scale bass put flat wound strings on it it doesn't matter the quality as long as you can play it and away you go. This is my 1971 Gibson SG Deluxe that I bought for myself last year on my 50th birthday. I got it set up. I got some new tuners put on it. I got a new uh, bridge on there. I've got, I've got it playing really well, and it's really a very fun guitar. Down here, I've got, um, I've got some other kind of, kind of just you know various and sundry guitars. This is an. Alvarez uh, nylon string. We've got here my Martin D15. This guitar has been through the wars. I took this on tour with me and have had it since 1996. So it's been played all over quite a bit. And then I've got this kind of Franken Squire Telly thing that I'm putting different pickups in and I'm probably going to put a different neck on it and I'm going to do the same thing to this bullet strat that we got my daughter this is a PRS McCarty 594 S2 and uh, it is a very nice guitar I've been kind of a PRS snob over the years and kind of looked at them as like the lawyer doctor guitar but I never tried one so I ordered this guy, and it's one of the nicest guitars I've ever played, which is why they're so expensive and why why uh, people love them. Oh yeah, and this is my Arturia uh, Key Lab Essential 49 that I just can't figure out a space for right now. So I just leave it there in the guitar rack for when I need it. Over here, one of my newer purchases. This is a an Alesis Crimson II SE electronic drum kit. I'll make a drum track in the computer that I just, you know, sort of lay down basic tracks to. And then when it comes time, I come over here and I play real drums to uh, get rid of that track or to ghost that track. That's a technique. Ghost the MIDI track below your uh, actual drums and you get a little bit more punch. This is my shelf of wonder. All kinds of stuff on there, records, books, stuff I don't have any place for, reel-to-reel -reel tapes from back in the day when uh, that was the only way to record. Well, this is the this is the studio studio, I guess, and this is where I do all the video and live streaming stuff for Amazon and elsewhere. This big thing here, teleprompter. I use this either to show myself some stuff that I need to read on. Instead of a teleprompter, I have a small like 10-inch monitor camera monitor in there that I use as a monitor on the computer so I can put anything that I want to up there. I can put a script, I can put chat, I can put whatever. And this is my main camera. It is a Sony a7C with a Tamron 17 to 28, I believe, lens. Yeah, 17 to 28 lens. Uh, I have that on a dummy battery. I also have it running into the computer so I can take photos from the computer. This is the HDMI that goes into the back of the computer and gets everything into the computer. I don't even use SD cards anymore. <laughs> I don't even need, I, I don't use SD cards anymore. I record everything into the computer in OBS. So coming around here to the front, here's, here's what I look at when you look at this. And uh, this here is what I see when I'm sitting down. 
So you see I have monitor, monitor. They're two separate monitors, so I can just throw stuff up there when I want to see it when I'm recording. And then I keep LBS window, other window or game, you know, so just different permutations of things. And then I have my stream deck. I'm using a SteelSeries Rival mouse right now. And then over here, keyboard is a uh, GNMK, just keyboard mechanical keys. I could get fancy with it, but I don't because I don't care. So this is my, my SM7B. It's on this boom arm. I think this is a Vivo boom arm. That's not the original pull for it, but I just use this because it keeps the, the mic arm out of my face. Uh, this is for BenQ light bar that I can't put up here anymore because it's, I moved the monitor in front of the camera, which is better. But I can't use my screen bar and light my desk anymore. And the reason I did that is I wanted to get the Roadcaster Pro 2 off of the desk. I wanted to put it up on an arm so it's it's on an arm now and moves around. I'm gonna have a full review still on the Roadcaster. I know that I've done a couple of videos so far, but I haven't uh, I haven't fully covered my my thoughts on the roadcaster and why do i have a giant mixer over there and a roadcaster over here because that giant mixer is great and i could definitely use it and have incredible results but the roadcaster a road sent it to me so i've been using it to review it but b uh it's just so darn simple so if i'm doing music i'll i'll go on and switch to the the big board over there and if I'm just doing uh, video stuff or live streams, I'm just right here. This is the PC that I built that convinced me to leave the world of Mac. <laughs> so this is a SteelSeries 4000D airflow case, which I really, really like. It's an incredibly well-built, no sharp edges, plenty of room for cables, just really a pleasure to build in. So that's, that's what I built my computer in. I have in here 3060 Ti, the, an i7-12700K. This is an Asus motherboard that has five M.2 PCIe 4 uh, slots available. And uh, then down here, you can see, I hope, my Camlink Pro back here. This is what I plug all of my cameras into, and it brings up to four cameras into the computer. So I have one, one camera, two, and then three. I'll go into that, and I can film from any of them, or I can switch to any of them. My overhead camera is an A7 III that just has a 24 millimeter lens on it from Rokinon, and it's on a Rode boom arm, microphone arm, and that's what I get my overhead shots with. This is a Neewer 150 watt LED light. It's my main key light. And then I have a hair light back here. It's another Neewer, I don't even know what it is. Uh, so that's what I use for, for the hair light to give me a little bit of light on my face. And then I also bought that light that has an LED warm color bulb. I've got those bulbs. I never use those. Uh, and back here, so this is my couch that I've had forever. I can't get rid of it because it doesn't fit out any doors. <laughs> and then this back here is just, I bought these wood panels from a local big box hardware store. I think they were like 40, 50 bucks for nine square feet in a box. Use two and a half boxes to just put this up as a backdrop. And of course, put my play button up there and that's that's the backdrop that I'm using right now. And I'm gonna do something similar. I like this wood texture a lot. So I'm gonna do something similar in the new studio when I get to the new house. But uh, then I use these uh, some curtains to just kind of frame everything off. I've got a lot of sound paneling and, and curtains in this room to to deaden the sound just, just enough. Uh, curtains back there to cover the garage door. <laughs> Curtains over there to cover the door, and then curtains back there as well uh, behind the bookshelf. So that's the studio. Painfully Honest Tech, Sad Iron Studio is what it's called. Uh, 
Sat iron is something that I've used for many, many years. And so I've been filming in this now for a while and it's been going really well. This is probably the best, most comfortable, most like functional setup that I've had to this point. Everything fits and everything has a place and it's wonderful and now, now I'm moving. So uh, thanks so much for watching everything that I've talked about down in here and it'll be a long list will be in the description down below, links to that stuff. Uh, I'm gonna put stuff together into Amazon shopping, like wish lists or whatever. So you can check those out in, in bulk and yeah. Thanks so much for, for checking it out. And thanks so much for all the support over the past several years. The channel has been through some ups, and, you know, everybody goes through ups and downs. It's been a challenging time, but uh, I have been really enjoying doing what I do and you guys have made it possible. So I really do appreciate it. Thanks so much. Once again, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.